Hey, hello guys. Welcome back to the channel. In this particular video, we are going to talk about the Docker Compose. So what Docker Compose is, why it is used, how it is used, that is something we are going to see in a very detailed way, right? So let's discuss about what is the need of a Docker Compose. Now we've already, we already used a lot of commands, right? We have used the uh, uh, Docker build command to build the image, right? Build the image, we have used the Docker build command. Then we have used Docker run command to create a container, to create container. Now, if you closely uh, look at this command, what we have understood is that with the build command, we can only build only one image, okay? Then with the run command, we can start only one container. Then by using Docker network create command, we can create one network, right? But now, we earlier discussed about a microservice concept where for a single application, we might have 10, 15, 20, 30 microservices, depending on how big your applications is and how many indep independent components we have in that application. So those, those many microservices will be there. Now for each microservices, we are going to create a separate Docker image, right? So now let's consider a scenario where you want to deploy this application as a whole, right? Obviously that would be the requirement, right? So now if that is the case, let's take an example for your application, you have around 40 microservices, right? Now, what you will need to do is you have to use the build command 40 times to build the images for all these 40 microservices. Then you have to use Docker run command to create a container. So you have to use it that 40 times. So if you have multiple, if you want to create, we already discussed about the Docker networking concept. I'll put that link in the description. So if you have uh, multiple groups of networking, right? So you might need to create those many networks, right? Then if there is a one container, depending on other container, you also need to uh, understand that dependency and you need to follow that sequence as well, right? So the main challenge that we are facing is if you have multiple microservices that you want to start it together, then you need to run a lot of commands. You need to remember the dependency and all. So, and that will just add an extra overhead on the admin who is going to deploy that, right? So that is where this Docker Compose will help us to basically uh, uh, just give an uh, easy way to deploy your whole application, right? So what this Docker Compose is doing is, basically it says that you just write one file, okay? You just write one file. Basically we call this file as a Compose file. Okay, and inside this compose file, inside this compose file, we have to just specify all the microservices that we want to deploy. So for example, let's say you have a web microservice, right? Now, while starting a web microservice, we know that what all stuff we specify, right? With the image, the port, the network, the volume, the environment variable, whatever is required, we just put everything in the uh, Docker run command, right? Or if you want to build it, we use a Docker build command and specify a Docker file, right? So what this compose file suggests that it has some specific tags. We have to just choose, use that tags whenever you want to do a specific operation. So every tag has some specified meaning, right? So for example, we have a build attribute. What it specifies, if you want to build an image for this web microservice, you just provide the path of that Docker file. So let's say it is in the current directory, I'm using a joint, right? The next, it first of all, it will build the image and then from that image, it will try to create a container. So this will consider it as a container name, okay? Then we know the ports, okay? How to do the port binding. So that is also we can specify. First, we can specify the host port and then we can provide a container port. Let's say it's running on its right? Then if you have volumes, so just provide a volumes and then here you can just provide a source colon destination. This is how you can specify as many as volumes you want for your container. Then if you have any environment variable, then you have to just provide environments and then you have to provide a key equal to value. So this way you can add as many as environment variable. If you want to specify a network, just specify a network and then provide a network, right? So this way, what else we need to provide? So we have one more important tag that is links. 
So basically now let's say there is a web container and there is a database container, right? So obviously web container has a dependency on the database container. So we have to make sure that our database container is exist first and then the DB container, uh, sorry, web container. So if you want to specify that dependency, that is what you can specify under this links attribute. So if you specify links and let's say you have a database as a Redis. So if you just specify that Redis container name, so first Redis container will be created and then the, the uh, web container will be created, right? So this is how you can specify all the requirement of your microservice this way, right? So this is about one microservice, but if you have, even if you have 40 microservices, you just write another section here, let's say DB and keep adding its details down line, right? So this way, whatever number of microservices you have, just create a compose file, put all these details for each microservice. And then once this file is ready, this file you can give you as an input to this Docker compose utility. And then this Docker compose utility will do all the things for us, like creating a network, creating an image, start creating a container, whatever is required, everything it will do it for us. And whatever number of microservices we have specified, it will create all the microservice. And then all this microservice will interact with each other. And this, this whole application is ready for us to, for interaction, right? So this is how your Docker Compose works. So let me just quickly show you practically how it works, right? So I have an AWS instance and it's already running. So I'm going to use this AWS instance, right? So let me check if we have a Docker installed here, it's there. Let me check if it has a Docker Compose installed there or not. Okay, so Docker Compose is not installed here. So how we can install, you can simply just do if it install Docker com Docker hyphen Compose, right? So it's getting installed. So let it install by the time. I have one sample example available on my Git repo. So let me go there. I'll just clone that repo. I'll also provide the link of this. So let me just clone this. So I'm just doing a git clone and that git repo. So under this repo, perfect. So now I have a simple application, okay? This is a very simple application. So let me talk about what this application. So basically now I'm going to take two microservices, okay? Let's go to the next page maybe. So I have a two microservice. One is maybe web microservice and another one is a DB microservice, right? So what we are basically doing is, okay, whenever any users connect to this web microservice, we are just storing that the visiting count into the database, like, okay, visited once, visited two, visited three times. So all that information we are maintaining in the, into the database, okay? And what we are doing is, we have a Docker file for this particular web container, okay? And from that Docker file, we are, building the image through Docker Compose, okay? But for this, we are using a ready-made Redis image, which is available on the Docker app. So it will simply just pull it and it will create the container. Also, we are going to create one network, okay? Let's say MyNet network. So whenever this, let's say our system, so this network will be created and it will create one private network for us, okay? And inside that private network, all these two containers are running, right? So let me show you quickly the application. So you can see this is a very simple application. It is connecting to the Redis container. This is how it is connecting on port 6379. And then uh, you can see uh, it is just maintaining the count how many times we are getting, uh, we are visiting that particular container, right? So let me just save this. Now we already know how to write a Docker file. So I have a simple ready-made Docker file. You can see this Docker file is available, right? So now let me open the, Compose file. So this is how the uh, compose file will look like. Let me just explain this compose file. So basically, uh, this file is written in the YAML format. So YAML is basically a very standard configuration uh, configuration language which is used in a lot of DevOps tools. So it has the version called two. So we are using that version. Now under this services tag, you can add as many as microservice specification you want. So we have two microservice. First one is a web and second one is a Redis. That is what we are specifying, right? Now for the first microservice, we just now seen the Docker file. So by using a build attribute, we are specifying that to use a Docker file from the current location and build the image for this, okay? Then under ports, our container is running on 5,000 port. We are binding it to the host machine port 80. 
then using a link stack, we are specifying that, okay, this web container is depending on the Redis container. Okay, so it will first create a Redis container and then it will create a web container. That's what the dependency we can specify using a link stack. Then network specify on which network we want to create this particular container, right? So we are specifying that, okay, we wanted to create this on a MyNet network. Then for a Redis container, we have a ready-made image. So we are using an image tag and then we are specifying this image. So it will go and pull it from the Docker Hub and we are going to use that image. Now, here we are using a port stack because we wanted to bind that on the host machine. But for why we are using expose here, now we wanted to expose our web container to the external user. But if you, you see the database, we don't need to expose the database to the external user, right? Instead, we are just opening it to use it inside that network itself. Okay, that's why we are using an expose tag. So Redis container runs on 6379. And again, this Redis container is also running on the MyNet network. So that is also we are specifying. And then under network stack, we specify what network we wanted to create. So we are using saying that we wanted to create a network called MyNet. Okay, we are not specifying the subnet and all the details. So it will take the default value. Okay, but yeah, even if you want to just add the subnet attribute and it will, you, you can go ahead and just provide that subnet details, right? So that's how the your, uh, your compose file will look like. Let me show you how it works. So how to use it? One more thing, all the resources that are getting created, like the network, the compose file, uh, sorry, the image file, the network, all the containers, basically it will be prefixed by the folder name okay which inside that all these uh, details are there okay all these compose files is there so it will prefix this docker compose as the folder name whatever it is it will just prefix with that folder name right so how to use the command so docker compose is the utility hyphen m to just to specify the file compose is the file name that we have and then if you want to start a container we use up and then again hyphen d is same like if you want to run the containers in the background mode we have to use the hyphen d so let me start this and you'll observe this things that are happening. First of all, you can see the network is getting created. Look at the name. Docker Compose is the folder name and the MyNet, the name that we have given. Then it is pulling the Redis container, Redis image first. Okay. Then you can see for a web container, it is first of all pulling up basically from that Docker file, it is trying to build the image. Okay. So it is pulling that Python 2.7. Then on top of that, it will just do the uh, some installation and then finally we'll have a web, web image also ready and then it will create a Redis container first and then the web container, right? So let's wait for a few seconds. It is just, we are doing it for the first time. So it will take a little time to do that. So that Python 2.7 got built. Now on top of that, it is just installing the Py uh, dependency, right? What all dependency we had, like the Flask and the Redis client library. So it, that dependency it installed. And finally, you can see this particular image got created. Now, once the image got created, you can see it has started both the containers. So if I do Docker PS, you can see both the containers are running perfectly fine, right? So how to access, we already know that curl, localhost, and it was running on a port 80. We have binded it to the port 80. So if you run it, you can see it is showing that, okay, one time visited, two time visited, three time visited. So this count is basically getting maintained in this Redis container, right? So this is how simply in a single command, we started two container, but yeah, even if you have a 10, 100 containers, it will do it for us in a single command, okay? And if you want to stop it, it's a very simple, same command. Instead of up hyphen D, you have to just specify down, okay? And this time you can see container got removed. Now, if I do even network got removed. So if you see, there is nothing now, right? Now, again, if you want to create it, just go ahead and use the command up hyphen D. But this time, the image is already available. Both the images are available locally, so it doesn't need to pull it or the build it. Simply, it will start the container, okay? You can see it is just creating the container, okay? Container got started. It created a network and container got started. If you want to access again, you can go back and just call the velocity, okay? It got started and we are able to access, right? So this is how simply, with the help of Docker Compose, we can create as many as containers, we can build as many as images, we can create as many as networks in a, with a, just by running a single command. Only thing is, just write a Compose file and you are done, okay? Give it to the Compose file, it will take care of creating all this stuff for you, right? So that's it for this video. I hope everyone understood this Docker Compose concept. If you have any question, just put it in a comment and I'll try to answer as, as early as possible. So thanks everyone for watching this video. If you have not subscribed the channel, please do that. Thanks everyone.